Well, hello and welcome to this second episode in our series, New Map, First Day, or Day One, New Map Day One, and we are on the map. Gnadenthal. I suppose you could say Gnadenthal, which is in Canada, and it's a typical Canadian map. Let's have a quick look at the... Let's zoom that out. Let's have a quick look at it. It's a very square, very linear. Everything is in square blocks basically which is typical of North American maps. The fields with the exception of a few down at the bottom here are also very square and worker friendly I would imagine. We start off here which is our home here and we own our home and a field which is a grass field down there we own the farmyard field 117 and field 100 so we'll start off by going to go and have a look at those areas and then we will see what needs to be done and we'll when we up at the at the yard we'll have a look and see what machinery we have and then we'll just take it out from there There's some very small f fields by the looks of things i wonder if these are houses we'll have a look at that when we get up there as well right so let's get going we'll just jump into our lizard pickup 1986 version and I'll keep the map up on the bottom left hand side there just so you can get an idea of where we're going. So we're on a bit of a dirt track to start off with and then come up to the main road. Dairy on the left hand side there. Um, let's just make sure that we've got our interactive markers on. Yes we do. So we can just have, pop in quickly and have a look and see drive around the dairy. There must be delivery points somewhere. Doesn't look like it. Maybe we have to buy... We should probably have to buy the land or first or something along those lines. Right, so here we go. Up. Yeah, we are coming into our farm yard. So let's have a look and see. Oh, we didn't really want to go there. We want to get out of the vehicle. So nothing in these garages. So nice storage space there for vehicles, etc. And yeah, no connection to the next of to the rest of the farm there. So it's sitting a little bit on its own here. Presuming we own that. And let's get back and see. There's probably another turn in here. Here we go. Got some nice grain storage. This is our, our field. It's field 117. And what do we have in here? Spelt. So there are a couple of um, custom crops for this map. So let's have a quick look at those. I always find the best place to look for those is in the... There we go. In the prices menu. So let's have a look and see. Oh, what am I doing? Barley, oats, sorghum, that's all standard. This is all pretty standard. Let's 
There we go. So we've got millet and looks like that can be milled. Mustard seed goes into the oil mill by the looks of things. Can also sell it through the Blumengard grain. Spelt. That's what we've got now. We've got rye, triticale, alfalfa. So we can do hay and silage as well with the alfalfa. So that can be sold to the export and the animal dealer. Export and the animal animal dealer. Exports, I presume, is the train station. I'm not sure. So we've got clover, clover hay, clover silage, flax, peas, flax, just the exports. Peas, lentils, so mustard oil. We can produce mustard oil, obviously, from the mustard. So we've got flax again. So that's flax, and that must be Maybe flax straw, I think. Yeah, flax straw, I think. Right, so those are the the special crops, if you want to call it that, on this map. We're probably not going to be able to get through to many of them in this day one series, but we will be having a look at spelt. And we'll see where we can sell it, where we can mill it, so let's have a just have a look and see. Let's get back to the to the map. And I wonder if you can buy the periphery of the Oh you look at that. And so that's the production areas can be bought. And for next to no money, 154, well, I've got euros there, but $154. So that's a no-brainer. We'll buy that. Would you like to buy this land for 154? A uh, yes. Right. Let's get back into the van. And, well, actually, we won't get back into the van. We might get back in the van just to move it out of the way, yeah. So what we'll do is we'll get we'll get started on this harvest and while that's harvesting we'll go and have a look at our other field. In the meantime, let's have a look and see what we've got in here. So I suspect this is where all our big machinery is. Yeah, there we go. Nice harvester the John Deere. Yeah, it's not the big one, but it's uh, okay. It's probably a bit small for this map, this type of map. Two tractors. John Deere 7810 and the 6, 6250R or 6250R. Cedar planter. Trailer and potato equipment. That's interesting. That's interesting. So we'll see why. You don't often see a map starting with potatoes, so I wonder if the other field has got potatoes in it. Let's have a quick look. Um, field. Which field are we looking at now? Thirty-eight, so it's dark brown. That's not hot spots. We want growth crop types. Uh, lightish brown. Can't see anything over there. I don't think it's barley. Yeah, it looks like potatoes in there. Ah, well that's good, because we've got the equipment, if it is potatoes in there, to harvest that. 
I don't know if it's ready to be harvested or not. In the event, so let's get let's get started on doing the work that we need to do. And get the John Deere out, and I think it might be easier just to open this top door to get it out. Well, we were looking at the sea. Let's have a look. Just have a little bit more in-depth look at what we've got in terms of machinery here. So tractors, we've got two tractors. The John Deere 6250R. It's 300 horsepower, so we've got a bit of power there. And then we've got the 7810, slightly smaller. So that's quite nice. I wonder if one of them... Has any of them got? Yeah, that one's got um, um, front loader connections, so that's good. There are no animals on this map. It's not to say you can't put in animals, but um, yeah, so I'm not surprised to see that we don't have any. The equipment for um, for doing grass work. I don't think grass work at this stage is a priority, which is kind of in keeping. Oh, we don't want to go. Oh, yeah, we can. I thought we were blocked. Yeah. So um, as I said, we. Uh, we don't have any animals as standard on the map. Um, I think I'll actually utilize this down, down here somewhere because we'll get a work on there and that might just affect him if we leave it at the top there. And once again I'm getting a bit waylaid and getting excited about getting getting started. We were get, I was looking at this at what we had. We only got as far as the tractors. <laughs> Harvesters. There we go. 387. So, yeah, not the biggest in the world in terms of horsepower. So, but probably good enough to get started on the fields that we have here. And we've got the pickup trailer. Or small trailer. It's probably needs to be upgraded if you, if you get in, if you stay on the map for, for an extended period of time. Yeah, it's small, narrow um, harvest uh, a header for the harvester. Potato technology, basic equipment, plow, cultivator, disc harrow, cedars. Planters and then the front loader stuff and some weights. Yeah, so um, a fair spread for arable farming. I don't think there's much more you need as base equipment. It may end up being too small for the map, but certainly good enough to get started with. That gives you room, of course, to so which is. Anyway, so I think what we'll do is we'll do up and downs at the top here, and up and downs at the at the other end, and then we'll put a work on. Okay, basics, basics. You need to unfold first, and you need to have it on the right piece of equipment to unfold it. There we go. I didn't look at see what the cap capacity of this um, harvester was. Capacity is 10,000. I'm going to take two two loads to fill up the trailer, which I think was 22,000. So, um, yeah, let's get going. Do a couple of headlands quickly and then 
We're going to have a look at our other field. We can collect the straw, sell the straw as well. So this is spelt. What we'll do is we'll put it into the, put some into the. We'll buy a, um, I think a production in this, in this case. We'll buy. Hopefully we've got enough money to buy a mill, a flour mill. Mm -hmm. The expense of aren't they? I don't know whether we'll have enough money to do that. It's a bit tight in terms of this other field here. Yeah, what have we got in this field? Let's just have a quick look. So that's oats growing. Fairly small field. Oh, what I did want to do as well is just change a couple of settings on the. Uh, I believe that is that that is that snow crop destruction on fieldstone. I'm just turning fieldstone off. I don't think we'll plow anything, but still. But what I don't want is I, I want to be able to have to go and buy any inputs that we need. to go a little way down this way just to create a little turning area here. As I said I just want to create a little headland at the top and bottom of the field so I can get a work on it and we can go and have a look at the rest of the map. We'll certainly have start off by having a look at the rest of our field. first of all and we'll work this field depending on whether the other field needs to be harvested or not we'll work that we may look at a contract see if there's any contracts for harvesting or working with any of the other with the um, any well with any of the other crops that are new to this well that are linked to this map it's probably enough space to turn around so we'll just put uh, let's nip one down to the bottom we won't harvest just put our foot down and get down to the bottom of the field and go and do couple of uh, headlands there. The one thing that I have noticed and I did notice that also on um, some of the other in our Alma series that I did that next to the road there's a ditch which I presume is for for, for moving the snow into in the winter months. So I would have a hazard a guess that this is going to get pretty cold in the winter months. It's a ditch that I was just talking about to the to the right of us here. harvesting that badly that you can't keep to the edge of the field. Oh man. So impressions of the first field very flat. Very flat. But you do have that little that little dip next to the roads. That of course is typical for this type of area. Right. So just 
great, whatever. What we'll do is we'll, we'll do three on this one, then come down and start off the worker down this end where we've done this half beats or half. It's not half, it's a. Where we've kind of just harvested into the the up and down bit, so to speak. The thing with the American maps, of course, is that they, because they are so square and so, and so big, they, um, for me, they sometimes seem to lack a bit of character. There have been some exceptions. I'm thinking of um, things like uh, Alma, where um, they had lots of undulations in them. They weren't they weren't mountains or anything, or even hills. It was just basically basically undulations, and that kind of made it seem more interesting. This one here, with, you know, without all the tree lines, you'd pretty much be able to see to the end, edge of the map. Now I do that know that this map was original, well, in its original form is for PC and is a four times map. So this version has been scaled down to make it cross-play, multiplay. Why can't I drive straight? Um, which is which is very nice and very good. Yeah, so that's just my my feeling about a lot of North American maps in general. The challenge on the North America map, of course, comes with managing the size of the fields in the time period that you allow yourself to play. I'm just going to get a worker going on that and then we'll get back to the van. And hopefully before it's full, it is halfway full. Oh, come on. Oh, I'm having a terrible time of getting my harvester down in the right place. That's because I'm talking too much instead of playing the game. Get them going again. Oh, come on. What are you doing? There's no field found. Oh, there we go. Right, let's carry on. Let's crack on. I'm not covering myself in glory with the way I'm playing at the moment. We'll get back into the van and we'll call up the map and We'll head on down to field 38, which is ours as well. So I'm thinking if we go out here, and then we'll hit this little crossroads, if you want to call it. Um, not crossroad, um, I don't know what you want to call it, rat run road. <laughs> it kind of cuts the corner. Yes, yeah, so the, are these, so there's another farm here. We were looking at those fields. Yes, yeah, so there are. So it's grass. So there are fields, and they do each seem to have a house on them. So does that, that include the house when you buy them? Let's have a look. That's not where we want to go either. So it doesn't look like it. I 
So let's just choose one of those at random. 25 or so. Yeah, it does include the house as well. So that's very neat. So you've got these small, almost like allotment farms. Fantastic. That is a big plus for this map, in my opinion, because that allows you to to do a lot of different types of role play. It also is great for multiplayer because um, you can pre pretty much be the owner of a big a big farm and have people multiply with you as workers, but they've also got their little piece of land. They are collectibles, and I've just seen one here. There we go there. I'm not going to look for them from now, but I just thought I'd let you know. I think it's a collectible. Yeah, it is. 49, so there's 50 collectibles. How much did that bring in? A thousand. So there might, there might be something else. Maybe may believe because normally there's a hundred on the map, isn't there? Especially if there are a thousand, so there might be something else that looks... Maybe a Canadian flag or something, I don't know. Where's my van? There it is there. How much did that cost, by the way? The small pieces of... I got so excited that the house was on there. 30,000, yeah, so not huge money. Very nice, like that. I like that a lot. We still haven't got to half the <laughs> fuel yet. <laughs> oh dear. But that's the way it... That's the way I want this series to go, is that we'll... As we're moving amongst things, amongst our fields, and we're getting things going, getting a feel for the map, without going through a structured... So I'm thinking that it's this field down here. No, it's not that field. No, it's not that field. It is... I think if we go down here, we should... Will we get to the field that we... Yeah, this is our field on the... Yeah, it is. Potatoes. Unfortunately, they're still growing, so we won't be able to get into them. But what I like is that we do have the equipment to deal with that. Right, so the harvest is full. So I'm just going to tab back, get into the harvester, which should be fairly close to the... We're going to pick up a, a, um, a tractor with a trailer on. Get the small messy. Oh, the small messy. Oh, the John Deere guys are going to kill me. The small John Deere. And we will uh, hook up the trailer and we'll go and... Where, where is it? There it is there. Be able to get out without having to open it, the other door, I would think. Was it going to be famous last words? Wonder if I should put a weight on the front. Would be a good idea. Let's just drop that off there quickly, and we'll go. Put the weight on. Very much a John Deere farm. No problem with that. Oops. 
Alrighty, there we go. Well, the next thing is, has our worker stopped in the right... ...in the right place? Or do we have to... Yeah, it looks like it, it looks like it's going to be good. So Flex looks like it has fairly good healed. I'm going to presume that this field has had nothing done with it, so it's probably 30 or 40 percent yield, 38 percent yield here. You will need slime. Pretty much will need everything. We might even be able to get. Um, oh, we don't have anything to collect the straw, so we'll have to look at buying that as well. Something to to move the straw. I'm not going to bail it. I don't think. Or will the bail? Um, well, we'll have to think about that. Maybe we'll lease a baler, bail it up and then sell it. It'll just be a little bit quicker than uh, than ferrying ferrying the straw to a sale point with. Um, with a forage harvester. Right, so to that end, let's go and lease a baler. We don't have a baler, no. So let's lease a baler. We're not going to buy one now. Um, where are we? Balers. Um, What shall we get? Let's not get anything too big. I prefer square bales. That's round. We can do round bales. Bales, we'll do round bales. How much does it cost to lease? Yeah, we'll do that. Right, so now we need to get into the other tractor and we need to head off to the shop. So, first of all, we need to find out where the shop is. So, the shop is. Either there or there. So that's just up the drag from us. It's not too far away, so we can have a look at both of them. Right, let's go pitch our bail up. So is this the right road to go up? Yep. Traffic. Okay. The first place that showed stop. There we go. <laughs> not sure whether that technically was a stop, more than likely not. So let's have a look here. This may be a shop. Doesn't look like a shop. It does look like it's part refueling. Uh, so you've got Electric charge, biogas as well. Nice. Oh, this is the workshop. Pretty sure this is the workshop. Let's go. just make sure. 
Yep. So the other one must be the actual shop, which is just up the road, so it's not too far away. So I think if we go right here. Oops. I'm going to go into those ditches that I was talking about. Yeah, so when you get your snow blowers out or you can deposit all the snow in the winter time into these ditches. And it just kind of runs off from there. Yeah, I can see our bale at the back there. We we'll also need to to um, release a bale. Bale loader. But we'll do that after we've bailed. So we should get some money for this. I didn't actually ever look and see. We've got to get over seven thousand dollars. Uh yeah, this may not have been a I could have gone the I should have gone the cheaper method, shouldn't I? Uh yeah. Uh straw I think it's a little bit further up. Straw, there we go. Exports hundred and two Yeah, so it's probably not too bad. I think we'll get quite a bit of straw out of that. What else do we have yet while we're here? It's probably lime. It's probably fertilizer somewhere along. Liquid fertilizer, stone crusher. And this will all be in the area that we bought for 100 and 154,000. Oh, what? $154. I think just a little bit further up are some of the production areas, but we'll have a look at that when we deliver when we deliver the uh, the flax. And actually look to see where it needs. And it's not a contract, so we're going to either sell it or perhaps look to see if we can. Perhaps spend a bit of the money that we have on a on the on a mill if there's enough. Otherwise, we'll just have to sell it. It's not often that you would be buying productions on the first day of of being on a map. Whoops. Right. Get going, make some bales. Right, we'll get back to you once this is. Once this field has been done. Right, you're back with me. The, the harvest is full, so we will just jump out of the baler. And yeah, we've dropped our first bale just just here. Straw. There we go, that's uh 8,250 litres there. It'll be nice. Let's go and unload the, the harvester. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the spelt into our grain silo. And then we can split it up and take it to various different places to... Little bits to various different places to to have a look and see where they are and and what need 
well what they need with it we have to buy them how much they cost so obviously the things like the grain mill and the export areas will will obviously be able to um, would be able to offload it but what I wanted to have a look at is see is if we can afford the grain mill to start with I think a grain mill with the types of crops that we got is probably going to be one of the the best purchases oh, let's get this going let's do a bit of uh, chase and load so we have 94% too fast there we go just nip up to kind of off this load, float this into the grain silo which is not too far away yeah put the small messy on here and that's um, and uh, oh, it felt a bit sluggish as I was turning there, but it's uh, it can handle this trailer. There's no reason why it shouldn't handle this trailer. There we go. Pretty straightforward. Nothing unusual about that. Just do a little bit of a loop around the shed and we'll go and park this on the field or close to the field to collect the rest of the of the harvest. Right, let's get back into that. And Yep, there we go. Yeah, this harvest, this, oh no, this harvest, <laughs> this bale is a little bit overkill. I do like my square bales though. Just more efficient, don't have to stop and unload them, they just drop off the back. I was just holding my breath there that it didn't drop off in front of where the, <laughs> the harvester was going to go. We'll just, we'll just say, um, a bale loader and come and load these up and get those sold. Hopefully we make a bit of profit. And hopefully that might put us into a position, if we do make some profit on it. Um, to be able to buy the mill. We might have to sell off a bit of the grain and then buy the mill. This will get the flour going and then we won't be able to get to see any of the product in day one because we might we might might see some, we might see one pallet or so. Don't know. Depends on what time we we're already at midday. At what time we actually get to make the delivery once we've offloaded the the rest of the product from the harvester we will um, then start looking to see how we're going to distribute the um, the crop that we've got for now might not be the best price but 
because we're doing this one day series we've got to try and sell what we what we get just because basically we're just seeing how it plays out on day one I mean, of course you could just just harvest um, harvest it leave it there do some contracts so they completed their task we'll just finish this the swath oh talking about swaths this map is swath ready and bc bueller's swathing equipment was a requirement for the map i'm sure you noticed that when we were starting up um let's just deliver straight from the harvester i think No sense in going to offload onto the trailer just for the short little distance here. Yeah? So of course the um, the yield on that field was shocking, but that's to be expected on a new field. Can put the header back on the trailer and then we will have a quick look see how much right let's go and have a look and see how much we've got in the In the silo, we've got about 25,000 litres. Right, so let's first see what price we can get for that. And where we can sell it to. Uh, where we go? That way. Belt. Where is it? It was down near the bottom, wasn't it? It's belt. There we go. So exports, grain seems to be offering the best price, grain mill. So let's go and put, so yeah, I think what we'll do is we'll, we'll go up and have a look at the grain mill and see if we can buy it. So we'll put, let's say, Let's just say 10,000 litres in there, just under 10,000 litres. And then we'll take that up. Hopefully we can stop it in time. So where are we now? Let's just show the price fluctuations. 1295 is the top of the market. So we kind of way off the top of the market now, but actually we're right down at the bottom of the market, but so let's get back in here. And just put it, put some in here and then take it up to the grain mill. Right, so where are we now? Um, wheat, barley, it's canola, sorghum. Where are we? Spelt. Uh, yep, we'll stop there. And we'll go up to. Did I highlight it? It's probably not. So we'll go up to the grain mill and tag it. So, yep, it's just up the drag. Not very far away at all. So I, I, my feeling is that this map is going to be somewhat better in 4x 
because this would not be where we are now, sort of just south of center of the map to pretty much north of the map. Feels like a short run. Oh! Didn't stop at the stop street again. That's my fault. Insurance claim coming up in the event. It feels like a very short distance to to the um, industrial area, so to speak. But of course, the great thing is that the modders have taken the time to reduce the size down so that you can play this on console as well. And of course you can play it as multiplayer. And for that alone, I think this map is fantastic. Thanks to the modders for that. Of course we do these little series on maps and we give our opinions on them but that way that in no way diminishes the gratitude that I feel for the work that all modders do in making the mods and making them available to ourselves so thank you for that guys much appreciate much appreciated so let's have a look and see if we can buy this. How much is it going to cost? 96,000. So we really don't have enough money to buy that. So let's go and sell this to the grain mill, which I think is just across the road here. Or let's see where the best price is. 889 is at the grain mill. So let's tag that. But I've got a feeling it's just, yeah. It's just around the corner. Yeah. It'll be right in there, isn't it? So that'll hopefully give us a bit a bit of money in. We can then buy the grain mill and put the rest into the grain mill. We'll put some into the grain mill. Get that going. And then we can put some into the To bum garden or whatever it is um, Blumenthal or what, what, what is it called? Blumengard <laughs> uh, so while we're here we can go and buy that now We're not going to leave us a lot of money but probably going to mean that we can't uh, we're going to struggle to lease the. But we'll get some money from selling to the exports as well. Buy the grain bull for it. Yes. There we go. So, day one, we've been able to purchase the grain bull. Leaves us with $4,000 in cash. And of course, but the way I'm playing the series, I can't take any loans or anything like that. So, right, have I lost? Yeah. So, while we're here, let's just have a quick look across the road. So, I think we've got. What have we got here? That's the animal dealer. Livestock, yeah. This is. Pellet production, I presume. Look on the map. Oh, that's exports. 
it's boom and got exports. Excellent. So now we know where they are. Does this fold around? So that's just all part of the livestock. What do we have written in there? More livestock signs. Yeah, fantastic. Right, so at least we know where to where the exports are now. So we will go and pick up some more of the grain that we have in the in the silo. We'll split whatever there is pretty much half and half and we'll nip back up and deliver to the to the grain mill and also to the exports. Yeah, I feel, I feel this is a typical North American map. Plays well. Haven't found anything that of concern to be honest. So put another 8,000 in here. We will then sell this at the at the exports. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tag it just to make sure, but I'm pretty sure that I got that right. Um, where are we? Plumbing card exports. It's not the best price, of course, but that is secondary to what we. Are doing in this in the series. I say, normally speaking, you would have just held on to this grain because we're selling right down at, at the bottom end of the market. Of course, we were right. You can see it's going to be there. And then, uh, once we've done that, we'll just nip back and get the the other stuff for um, the rest yeah very slow off the mark there I thought I had enough time to get across across there <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm not endearing myself to the local population that's for sure one accident and a couple of near ones right just did a bit of a jump cut to you here just trying to save on little bits of time here and there. And we're just going to make this delivery. I nearly went down this road because I thought you could get in there, but you can't. And of course, there's that big ditch that you'd have to drive through if you wanted to take the shortcut. There we go. Spelt. How much is it going to give us? Another 7,000. At least we've got 11,000 in the bank now. Right, so what I'll do is I'll just jump cut back to the... Whoops, can't go down there. Jump cut back to the, to the farm. I'll pick up the rest. And then I'll catch you as we deliver to the... To the... Um, to the grain mill. See you then. Right, you're back with me. We're just about back at the at the grain mill. So we're about to deliver. We've got the balance of the spelt that was in there, just over 8,000 litres that we'll put into here. And we'll get some flour going. So it was quite a nice little exercise. We got to see the grain mill the export Blumengart export we've got to see the Blumengart grain 
and um, we're going to get our first production going. And that's all before right where we know spelt flower that's activated normally so we should really deactivate everything else because it does uh, it is deactivate 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 because I think it costs us money We'll leave that as activated spelt flower and leave that in storing. Maybe we'll be able to see if there's a pallet by the time we finished. Right, so I'm going to head back down to the field. I'm going to actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, as soon as we are up here near the, I'm going to have to look and see if there's a a contract that we can do and that'll just give us a, um, a little bit of a what do we have here is it just another farm silage pits that we're going to be able to get in there because we can't so yeah, so it looks like quite a big farm up here, stuck between the the shop and the and the little industrial area. Yeah. So as I was saying before, I got way late. <laughs> uh, we'll do a see if we can pick up a contract. We'll hire the equipment, and then we'll be able to just nip one down there and. The, should take us for a little trip through the through the through the map and then while that contract is going I will um, I will finish off the collection of the of the straw on our field and uh, we will hopefully get that delivered um, we are in a contract baling, fertilizing, spraying. Right, so let's do this fertilizing contract and we'll borrow the items and then we'll have to buy some fertilizer. So there are the items. We need to buy some fertilizer. And big bags of fertilizer. It's probably going to cost us a bit. I think what we'll do is we'll. Where is it? Solid fertilizer. Let's buy two for now and see how far that goes. Right, let's see where we. Where we have to work from? What what field number was that? Field eighteen. Field eighteen is Not too far away from here. Nice and easy to do. Quite a big field. Get the McCormick going. And we'll go down there and we'll just put put a, um, a work on it. Oh. We do need to refill. Yeah, I'm not sure whether this is going to be enough. Oh, we've bought fertilizer. 
That's all. That's what we needed to do. Why did I think it was going to have to do lime? It's a fertilizing contract. 2,000 liters. It's not going to be enough. We'll see how far it gets us. So we just got to go up to the next road, turn right. That should bring us around Is that the road. Yeah. Should be a little way down this road, but at least it gives us a nice little trip around the around the it well around the map. You can get this feeling of it being really flat and vast. I can only imagine what the 4x map must feel like. Should I, I should go down and have a look at it sometime, I suppose. Where are we? Have we got to go down here? Got to turn right down here. Even though a mat flat, a mat, a mat, a map is flat. You still need to to work on it. We are we field eighteen. Oops! So we can't go in there because of the ditch. Let's get going. We'll just do the top and then I'll uh I'll put this onto a worker. down the side as well just so we can do the because I'm guessing there's going to be a ditch on the road at the bottom when we get there as well probably touch and go whether we can get this all done with uh, two bags of fertilizer the other good thing about doing it with the workers is that you tend to use less fertilizer because they are slightly more efficient when it comes to the overlapping I'm not using things like GPS and here or anything like that Oh yeah, we definitely have to do it to do a trip down this bottom end because we don't want to ruin our neighbor's field. So let's get 
Is there a ditch down the middle? No. Very tight between the uh, between the fields as well. The feeling is that once we get to the bottom here, we can put the work on. Should have enough space to turn. Both ends. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we're definitely not going to have enough fertilizer because we've only really done three passes and we used not quite but nearly half. Let's, let's just get this started and we'll get the trusted worker up and running. Oh, we don't want to go on their field. Very difficult um, with the fields being so close to not destroy. Right. <laughs> Why doesn't it want to work? Maybe because it's Go. Right, let's get back and do some more baling and then we'll get back to you once the baling's been done and the contract has been done. Right, you're back with me. We just about finished the baling of the straw and once we've done that, we'll go up and check up on our on our worker doing the contract. Let's just empty this. There we go. We can get that returned, so we don't have to pay any more for it. They'll come down and pick it up from us. Turn that baler. Right, that is empty. So we've got to try and just get an idea of where we are. Yeah, so it's probably another. I think we'll only need another one. One big bag, I think. And what I'll do is I'll start it from the other side. Oops. Nearly went through the through the ditch again. I think we could have got there quicker by going back down. Yeah, oh, no, then we would have had to try drive through everybody else's fields. So it's probably the most prudent way of getting back to the store. Of course, we could have just... Whoa! We could have put this on the back of a trailer and brought it up or put it on the forklift of the tray. But it's probably just quicker just to drive back to the store. It's not that far away. We go and buy another bag of fertilizer. And hold thumbs that it finishes the contract.
course there's the wonderful mod that would tell you exactly how much you would have needed but because we're not using any mods <laughs> can't do that we have to we have to do our own mental calculations and my mental calculation was incorrect not by a huge amount well some will say a third <laughs> right and big bags thorough fertilizer we buy just the one I don't know why I'm all thumbs and just not pushing right buttons today, but it's just the way it is sometimes, I suppose. Let's go back down to six grand. We're pushing the cash flow, that's for sure. See you once we're back at the field. Right, you're back with me again. Back on the field, we've got it done. Started in on the other side. Will be a bit of overlapping, but hopefully it'll get finished. While they're finishing that off, I'm going to head on back and go and uh, pick up a well hopefully we've got enough money still to lease a bale loader as I said I'm not worried about being as profitable as possible to start with it's more about how I you can get going on the first day. Hopefully this load of straw will bring in a, a reasonable amount. Although my feeling is it's probably not going to cover <laughs> the cost of the of the uh, baler and the uh, the bale loader which I'm going to now lease but it's good fun oh, oh. Yeah, let's, let's pop into the shop and go do the leasing and where are we done the bale loaders we are there. Pair loaders. There it is there. Oh, it's not going to be cheap. X at least another 4,000. 7, 11, it's probably 12,000. Doubt with it will get 12,000 for the bales. But yeah. That's going to take us down to next to no money. Hopefully there's enough money to... It's completed their task, so we should now be able to... Hopefully we've completed... Yep, it's completed. So that's a timely way to get a bit more money in. So we're not that bad now. <laughs> Is the contract done? So you would have noticed that there was a contract for spraying, but I made a mistake and I um, I did not. Um, least equipment at the same time so that's not going to work 
Luckily it doesn't cost us any money. We're just not going to be able to do the contract. My bad, as they say in the classics. I'll see you when we get back to the field. Right, here we are back at the field now. Let's get this into operation position. I think this can take 14. I'm not sure. Yeah, let's have a look and see how many bales we've got. Uh, where do we go to? We go down. Yeah. <laughs> got 12 bales, so yeah, we should be able to get one load out here. Not a problem. Not a problem at all. Now this is a brilliant bell loader. And there are some videos on YouTube showing the real life bell loaders in action. Fantastic. Of course you need to be big into your bales to warrant the expense of that. So I'm sure there's a lot, not a lot of farmers who would... Well, there must be. I mean, if they've developed the, the equipment, there must be quite a few farmers that use it. It's just I haven't seen any in real life out here around about the farms that I've been on. I think people like loading with their JCBs, front loaders, yeah, what telehandle is. It's fun. <laughs> it's probably fun for the first 10 bales. When you get into bale 200 or 250, a machine like this looks looks good <laughs> oh dear. so what did we say the leasing owes us about 12 grand don't think we're going to get 12 grand for this Transport position, and we've got 12 on there. Yeah, right where we're we going to sell these to. Uh, where are we going now? Back up here, straw. I think it's a little bit further up here. Did I not say that? It sounds like deja vu. I'm sure, I've said that before. Let's cross say straw. There we go. Uh, exports. 103. Hmm. Maybe. Let's just have a look at the price fluctuations. Uh, pretty much right down at the bottom again. <laughs> it's always going to be the case when you just export because, uh, not to export, when you try and sell straight after harvesting because uh, everybody else is doing the same thing. The market is always a bit flooded. Just after the harvests. So it's always good to, in normal circumstances, hold on to these things until you can get some decent pricing. But for us now, this is just all about seeing where we end up. This is going to be our last job for day one. So as soon as we've offloaded this, I will just give you my final thoughts on the map. Right, here we are. Let's get this offloaded. Um, unload. And see how much we make. See if it was a wise idea to do all that very expensive leasing. And that 
No, it wasn't. Ten grand we made. Twelve, maybe thirteen grand we spent. <laughs> oh dear. In any case, it's not the end of the world. It did, uh... Oh, I can't even say it showed us a little bit more of the field, fields. It just showed us that we shouldn't be extravagant with our spending when we first start. Right, well that's where we're going to start ra wrapping up this episode. My final thoughts on the map. If you like big American maps with, in this case, small, medium and large fields, this map is for you. It's very flat, the roads are oh, very linear, if that's the right word, I've been using that quite often, but everything is in squares. Um, I know that's not for everybody. But I haven't found any any issues with the map. The map plays well, does what it says on the tin. It is a North American arable farming map. The equipment that you start with is exactly right for the size of fields that you have to start with and for the type of work that you're going to be doing. Particularly impressed that that we had the potato equipment available in new farmer mode so that you could that you can harvest your potatoes probably in the next month or so or the next day or so all the other equipment works fantastically for that um, contracts look like they are pretty good a pricing of the fields look reasonable for this type of map sometimes they can be a little bit over the top and what i particularly like was some of those small fields around the um i suppose you'd call it the town area but the the um the area around our main farms you had those lots of those little small almost small holdings and that to me is fantastic for this map it conjures up so many ideas for multiplayer on this map this map is ideal for multiplayer there are lots of little farms around or lots of farm steads around that can be bought um, and yeah fantastic if you like big open american maps this one is for you if you like European maps with all the quirks, characters and such like, then this map is probably not for you. But having said that, I've enjoyed this first day on Nardenthal. Thank you so much for watching. Do hope you've enjoyed this. If you have, please like and subscribe does help me out and we'll catch you in the next one. Cheerio.